Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Wigging Out with Bobby Z. It's a Wiggy Weavy Wednesday, and today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite things in the whole wide world, and something that is essential for wig making, crafting, um, hats, drag, anything like that. I'm sorry, I sound a little bit like B. Arthur today, I don't know why. Um, I guess because I slept a lot last night and I have a bit sleeping, I don't know. Body's weird. Anyway, I've been getting asked a lot here on YouTube and on Instagram about why I use canvas heads, what the difference is, how I cover them, where I get them from, all of these things. So I figured I'll just do a video and then in the future when everyone asks me, I can say, hey stupid, watch my video. Okay. I'm also going to show you guys today in this video how to cover your canvas heads with plastic and tape so that they are protected and they stay clean from hairspray and water and setting lotion and gel and all of that fun stuff. So stay tuned. Canvas head is made out of fabric, usually canvas. They're usually tan in color. I have different shade values as well. Some are more gray, some are more dark brown, some are more light brown, all of that. And it's just different from manufacturer to manufacturer. Um, the color of them does not matter at all. It's the shape and the size is what matters the most. The first thing about canvas heads is that they come short and long. So as you can see, this is the short and this is the long, and these are the same size. These are both 21 and a half. But you can see this one is about four inches taller. Um, the head is the same size. The head is relatively the same shape, but it's taller. I love long neck blocks for when I'm working on a show and something's gonna be down or something's long. Then a long neck block is perfect because if you have a long, if you have a wig that's like a flip or something that hits, you know, right at the shoulder, you put it on a short neck block and it's gonna hang on the shelf below it. But if you put it on a long neck block, it's gonna nicely float above the the shelf surface. Long necks are also amazing for when you're doing updos because you can stretch the back of the wig down as far as you possibly can and then in to make sure that it fits all of your head. And then you also have room to put your rollers. You're gonna have trouble putting rollers in here because the edge of the wig is gonna sit right on the seam. So you're gonna have to kind of angle up with your roller, with your um, pin placement and all of that. Whereas when you have a long neck, there's several inches below where your wig ends for you to pin. I'm sure you're wondering, should I get a short neck? Should I get a long neck? That depends on what you're doing and what you're using them for. Most of my blocks happen to be short necks. Um, that's just because I got a whole bunch of them from a friend when she moved out of the country. For drag and for for drag and for wig making, I would say for drag, I would say get a long neck because you know you're gonna be setting it, you're gonna be sewing things into it, you're gonna be stretching it out, maybe making it bigger if your head if the wig's too small. You know, you want to put in an updo, so you want to stretch the back and the sides out as much as you can. So get, an, get a long neck. For wig making and ventilating and stuff like that, stick to a short neck. At least that's my personal preference. People always ask me a lot, well, why can't I just make wigs on these? Like a styrofoam head and a cosmetology head. See, I'm not saying you can't make wigs on them. I'm saying you shouldn't. <laughs> I understand that not everyone can afford a $35, $40 canvas head, and these are, you know, three bucks at the beauty supply, and you can go to your neighbor down the street and borrow this from her because she went to beauty school. Now, I understand that. However, if you want to take it seriously and you want your things to be made properly and well, please use a canvas head. I the problem with making wigs and pieces on these is that not everyone's head is this size. So, as you can see, that's not that big. That's kind of little. And this is, you know, more of like a normal, maybe a normal size head. But I have a humongous melon head. Canvas heads come in half inch increments from about 19 inches to about 25 inches. The really, really big ones and the really, really small ones are rare and they're harder to find. But you can find them if you search hard enough. Now, I have about a dozen canvas heads. The smallest one I have is a uh, 21 and a half, which is this guy. And the biggest one I have is a 24 and a half, which is this guy. So you can see the difference of sizes. The difference, how much bigger that is than this, kind of crazy, right? Yeah. To properly measure yourself for a canvas head, what I like to do is I like to take two different measurements 
and then kind of average the difference because every manufacturer measures their blocks differently and I know a lot of people that measure their heads differently. So I just figured out, well, if I do these two measurements and I just split the difference, it usually turns out okay. So we'll need a measuring tape. And what I like to do is I like to go around my head like this, almost like a hat. So I like to take that measurement and I just put my finger where it tucks over. So that for me is 24 and a quarter. I got a big head, like I said. And then I like to go across the back, almost like you're wearing a headband across the top of your head. And then I take that measurement, which is 24. So my average measurement is 24 and an eighth, which means just means I'd get a 24 inch block. Now, personally, this is also personal preference and this depends on how your head is shaped in all of this. Me, what I do is if I'm making a wig for myself or if I'm styling a wig for myself, I generally will do it on a 23 to a 23 and a half. And just making it that one inch smaller, it just fits my head perfectly. I'm not sure if it's just the way that this guy is shaped because he is shaped, you know, he has a nice roundness to him. I don't know if it's just the way that he's shaped versus this way versus my head. I don't know, but if I style them on a big head, they tend to not fit me really well. Well, even though I am a 24, I need to do a 23 or 23 and a half, even though, just so that they fit me correctly. And that's just experimentation. I can't say that, that it's that way for everybody. I know people that are 23 and a half, but their wigs need to be on a 24 for them to fit. So I know people that have to go up in a size. I know people that have to go down in a size. I know of people that are just a perfect size by themselves. You know, it's just how it is. Number one reason why it breaks my heart when I see wig makers or hairstylists on Instagram and YouTube and stuff building and styling things on styrofoam heads is because they are so tiny. They have 21, like a styrofoam head and a mannequin head has a circumference of about 21. The average person's head is a 22 and a half. So you gotta think about that. If you're, if you're building something, if you're building or styling a wig for somebody, you need to have a head measurement. You need to know. Because if someone orders a custom wig for you from you and you make it on a 21 inch head and they happen to have a 23 inch head, your wig ain't gonna fit. You're the one that messed up because you built it on this instead of on a canvas head. So I'm gonna do a little size comparison for you guys. This block here is a short neck and it's a 22 and a half. This is a styrofoam head and it's a circumference of 21 inches. So if I hold them like this, you can definitely see the difference in shape and the difference in size. Granted, this head is longer, it's more of an oblong shape, and this head is rounder, but you can see this one's rounder and wider than this one is. This is a full inch and a half bigger, circumference-wise, than this. So if you're building a wig for a client on this, and your client's head is this, your wig ain't gonna fit. I've also gotten a lot of people asking me how I cover my blocks. So as you can see, this one is kind of jank. It needs recovered. Um, I covered this block about a year ago. You do have to recover them every year or every couple months, depending on how much you use them. I usually like to cover my blocks when they're brand new, right when I get them. And then that way, they're always protected. I do have some that I've had for years and years and years that aren't that weren't covered until recently. I also have some that I recently got from a wig maker friend of mine that moved out of the country and hers were covered, but again, like mine, she had some for a couple years before she started covering them. This canvas head is pretty much brand new. This is one of the ones I got from my friend because her initials are on the back, um, but I bought them from her, I swear to God. This is a 21 and a half, but you can see it's brand new. It doesn't have any stains on it. It doesn't have any watermarks or anything. I don't even think I've used this since I got it from her. And if I did, I think I just put a wig on top of it um, when I took it off a different head. But this one, as you can see, is not brand new and has been used. This is what happens when you don't cover a canvas head. You can see that this whole perimeter part of it, where the face would be, you can see, an, you can basically see a permanent outline of a wig on the head just from you know years and years of wet setting and hairspraying and using gel and all of that stuff, that's what all this is. This is product buildup. You really can't get it off. Like it's canvas, it's on there. If you get this wet, the cork inside absorbs it and that's not good. Another reason why you cover them is because it protects the block from moisture and mildew damage. Because as you can, um, this is fabric. 
And as you can see, the gel, the hairspray, all of that is like pounded into these fibers. You can't wash this off. Like you can't get a sponge and scrub it off because you'll get the inside of the block soaking wet and it'll never dry. The reason why when I do, when I boil wigs, I hold them upside down and I pour the boiling water around it because I don't want to pour the boiling water directly on my head. This is what they look like brand new. This is what they look like covered. And this is what they look like when you don't cover them. So choose wisely, children. So now I'm actually gonna show you guys how I cover them. You'll need a canvas block. Dumb. Next, you will need plastic storage bags. Now these bags I got at the grocery, these ones I got at the dollar store, the other ones I got at the grocery store. Um, they don't have to be expensive. They can be cheap. They can be whatever brand you want but you need to get the ones that don't have a zipper. See how this is just a baggie? Um, you, need to get, you need to get the thin storage bags like this because they're very, very thin plastic. And once you put the tape over them, you melt them with a blow dryer. So you need to be able to have something thin that will melt down and make a helmet basically around the head. From, the, from what I've seen, the food storage bags that I like come in two different sizes. They come in one gallon and two gallons. One gallon really only works for really small, short neck blocks, like a 21, a 21 and a half short neck. But if you try to put it on a long neck, it's not gonna come all the way down and you're gonna have to get a longer bag. The two gallons are perfect for bigger blocks and long neck blocks. For the one problem is the smaller block that you use, the more extra plastic you'll have left over. But I'll show you guys how to deal with that in a minute. Now, these are what I'm going to be using today. These are the hefty baggies in the two gallon size. A pair of scissors. A blow dryer. So need to get transparent office tape. Don't use craft tape. Don't use shipping tape. Don't use um, just plain like cheap gift wrap tape. No, you need to use the transparent office tape that comes on the big roll like this that your kindergarten teacher had on her desk. This is what you need to use. If you, I personally use the Scotch brand. There's several other brands out there. Usually when I do this, I will use the one inch tape, which is the best because it's wider. However, I have a whole bunch of rolls of three quarter tape and my dispenser currently has three quarter tape in it. So <laughs> you can usually, you can do this with one inch tape or three quarter inch tape. I just find that with one inch tape, it goes faster and it lasts longer because you can overlap the tape more. But if you only get three quarter tape, that's fine, it'll work. You're also gonna need some small headed pins. Usually when you get your canvas head, you can look at it and see, oh, this is flatter, this is rounder, so this is the back of the head, this is the front of the head. Because when you think about it, your face is pretty much flat. Like, I mean, yeah, your jaw, whatever. But when you look at the side of your head and your profile, your head rounds back and your face is relatively flat. So you want to think of the canvas head being the same thing. You get into the larger heads, this one's a 23. You will find that you don't really know which is the front and which is the back because they're both pretty much equally as round. So usually what I like to do is I like to look at which part has a rounder shape coming in like that and I make that the back. See how there's that seam on the top? I like to do mine inside out so that I don't have to bother with that seam when I'm taping it down. And I just find that it, I think it gives me a smoother finish, personally. I put one in the front center right there, one in the back center. And then I usually put one on either side right where that side seam is. So I'm going to turn it to the side now. I take the extra bag in the back. This is the front. This is the back. I take it in this right in the middle of the back and I twist it like this. So eventually what happens is you twist and twist and twist and you get in right at that little corner right there. And you basically you twist all the way down until you reach the back of the block. And then what you're going to want to do is you're just going to take some little pins like that. So you're going to tape over them. So these are going to permanently be in there until you take your shaping off. This is just what I personally do. 
I know a lot of people that don't use pins when they tape. I like to do it just because I find that I get the best... Um, I just find that I get the best turnout when I do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my center top two pins out. You want to take a piece of tape that is about a foot, a foot and a half long, and you want to just go straight down the middle. And basically what this piece of tape is doing is the piece of tape is taping down the corners of the bag that were up here. And then you want to take another piece that's a little longer and do the same thing to really make sure that that is taped. Pulling it very taut when I tape it and that's key to getting it tight. Next what I'll do is I'll go about two inches in front of that on the front part of the head. So basically right behind where that, that pin is up there and I do the same thing. So you can see here my tape line goes like that. I put my blinds down because you couldn't see. So I took a piece of tape right behind that front, that front pin and then I'm going to do the same thing in the back going forward. So I'm going to put the tape right in front of that back pin and I'm going to tape forward. So you're basically bracing that top part, getting it ready to wrap the tape around it. Just take one more long piece, of, one more medium long piece of tape and go just straight across the front like that. So you're basically anchoring the whole back of it, the whole front of it down. Usually what I like to do is I like to kind of pick up where that tape left off on the back and wrap it around really tight and pull this side taut as I do it like that. So you basically have a line down the middle, a line down either side and all the way around the center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in layers of tape like this and tape the whole thing going to the front. Then I'm gonna flip it around and tape the whole thing going to the back. The reason why I do this is so when I seal the tape down with the blow dryer, I won't have any frizzy little end pieces from tape in the front where the lace or the front of my wig will sit and it'll be nice and smooth. And you just wanna lay your tape down. Now you really want to make sure when you lay your tape down that you're covering your previous line of tape by at least half. So I like to line up my piece of tape with the middle of my next piece of tape. So what you're doing is you're creating an overlay. So I sped this up as you can see. I just keep going down the back portion of the block, covering it with tape, overlaying it by half, and making sure that my ends are smooth and tight across the front portion. And then usually once I tape the back pretty good, I go back and I tape the top back down just one more time to make it super tight, like that. Okay, flip it around. I'm going to do the same exact thing. So you want to start in the top middle. I sped this up again. I'm just repeating the same thing I did on the back, overlaying it by half each time, pivoting across the round portions of the crown and the forehead area. And then um, once I get down to the bottom, I don't take the tape all the way down onto the plastic. I stop on the bottom of the block. Okay, so she's fully taped. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this excess plastic off. Then I like to do just one more piece of tape all along the bottom edge. I don't overlay it. I don't fold it over onto the actual plastic of the base of the block, but I do like to tape around the bottom once more super tight just to make sure that I get it nice and good. So you can see that there's layers of tape going this way, up and down. That writing is from the bag. The tape's going up and down like that. Up here it's kind of bubbly and gross. See how there's a big bubble right here? I'm just going to put another piece of tape right over that to kind of just get that down flat. Because um, as long as it's down, as long as it's tight and it's taped over very tightly, it will all melt down fine. So now I'm going to take my blow dryer and I'm actually going to put the blow dryer right on the plastic to melt it down. 
Um, you can put this in a wig dryer on high for, for about 20 minutes. It'll melt it down. Make sure you turn it in the dryer, though, so that it'll get equal heat from all angles. I like to do it with the blow dryer because it takes two minutes, and it gives you the same result and faster. So blow dryer on the highest heat setting and the highest blow setting you have. Put it right up against that and go to town quickly because if you put it for too long, it'll scorch it. You can see I'm going around quickly with round motions and you'll see I'm also covering the back of the blow dryer in the really thick portions on the corners because that's a tip I got from a Dominican salon is to cover the back of the blow dryer to increase the heat output. You'll also see me retaping portions because if you miss a spot with tape, the plastic bag will melt. So just tape over it really quickly and melt it again. All right. So I sealed her all the way down with the blow dryer. You can still see the lines and everything, but she's much smoother and compact, and she is entirely glossy smooth all the way around. So yeah, that's how you cover a block with tape. Hey guys, thanks for watching again. I hope you learned something today and that you guys are gonna head out and get some canvas heads and start playing around with them. So check the box below for links on where you can get your own canvas head and all the supplies I used today. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, here, Facebook, all of those fun things. Be sure to send me emails, tell me what you wanna see or if you wanna place a custom order with me, anything like that. My email's in the box as well. So thank you guys for watching, have a great one and I'll see you next week, bye.